Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome to the interview with the official creator of the Dr. Grodbort system. He is one of the primary boffins who's been hashing out this little adventure for the people who cannot afford or do not have the time to go on Venusian expeditions themselves. And his name is Brian Saliba. Would you say hello to the kiddies? Uh, hello, Coxwain. Thanks so much for uh, for having me on and, and um, being willing to talk through some of this stuff. Um, you are obviously an icon um, of the solar system and, you know, dare I say the galaxy, dare I say the universe. Um, hello uh, to all our uh, scientific adventuring boys and girls out there. Um, looking forward to, to talking through what we're up to with Dr. Gordbort's scientific adventure violence, the, uh, the, the uh, role-playing game setting and supplement that uh, we're developing um, based upon the work of uh, Greg Broadmoor. Well, I'll do anything for Dr. G and anything for a tax write-off as well. So, we understand that you have based this system on Dungeons and Dragons, that famous role-playing game of yesteryear, but you are updating it to the fantastical universe of Dr. Broadbolt. That's right. Uh, sh shall I call you uh, uh, Lord? Shall I just call you old Coxie? Uh, what, what do you prefer? Well, my friends call me Coxie, at least up until they die, so that'll be fine. Great. All right. Well, Coxie, yeah, we, we decided to use the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition uh, rule set to base this uh, this supplement and there were a few reasons for that um, one of which is um, obviously the ubiquity of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition um, it is probably the most single most popular role-playing game system of all time at this point I would think it's not the only factor that went into that decision and, and actually not even the most significant one um, when we talked to Greg about this and uh, and also Stardog and, and, and Weta for them, it wasn't really about how much money they can squeeze out of this thing. So it wasn't just, you know, what's what system can we use that will uh, that will make sure we we get the maximum return on our investment. For them, uh, it was about getting the the IP into as many people's hands as possible. Um, and uh, you know, obviously, there are commercial implications as well. So uh, that that went into the decision, but. Uh, there were some other factors too, one of which is the fact that of the three authors, Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition is the system that we all know collectively well enough to, to attempt this adaptation. Uh, we, all of us play and write and DM with all kinds of other systems, but uh, for the three of us, it was um, this was the one that collectively we, we knew well enough to attempt this for. Um, and another factor is, is that we felt like um, in this kind of golden age of, of role-playing games and uh, given the popularity of things like Critical Role and, and their emphasis on cathartic emotional moments at the table and, uh, and, and it just felt like the hobby was, was really taking itself very, very seriously, um, which is a good thing. Um, it's, it's people uh, getting really attached to their characters and, and really engaging with the, with the game, the collective narrative. Uh, but we thought that it might be cool for 5e players to see a kind of satirical take on role-playing games and, and that's that's something that happens a lot uh, or is, is, is fairly common in kind of old school role-playing games and more kind of niche systems um, the kind of lampooning or sending up uh, of elements within the game and of role-playing gaming itself but we thought maybe in 5e there was there wasn't as much of that and so it was a kind of a fun opportunity to maybe introduce the idea of satire uh, to to 5e gamers. So that was that was another reason we we landed with 5e. Another one is that we think it's a good rule system. It works pretty well. It's not without its flaws, of course. But we were really intrigued by the challenge of taking a rule system that is heavily reliant on magic and updating it for a setting in which magic doesn't exist. This is the age of science and reason. You know, magic pish posh. So we'll have none of that silliness here. So. We thought that would be a really interesting challenge. How, how do you cast lightning bolt? How do you cast fireball? What is divine healing? How, how do these things, how do you turn undead? How do these things work in a world which canonically magic doesn't exist? There's no such thing. And uh, that, that has been one of the biggest challenges. And I think one of the things that we're most proud of where we, where we kind of landed. I, I hope 
that people who've checked out the quick starts and ultimately people who who give the the setting a shot will agree and that really is the dr g creed at the end of the day improving on the known and shoving it into the unknown 